Welcome back to New Rockstars, I'm Eric Voss, and Loki just solved one of the MCU's biggest mysteries since Avengers Endgame, the question of where and when exactly old Steve Rogers came from. And if the reason we haven't seen him since is that the TVA pruned him in the middle of feeding ducks. Go and get in there, quacked in America. Did he live his second life in the background of the MCU we've been watching, as the Endgame screenwriters claim? Or did going back to 1949 with Peggy Carter create a branch timeline, as the Endgame directors say? Who's really run in this cinematic universe? The nerds with the whiteboards or the broken bros and ball caps? Turns out it's whoever makes the next thing, to which Kevin Feige says, sure, that works. Loki director Kate Heron just provided the clearest explanation yet of Cap's actual fate and current status in the MCU, at least according to the TVA timeline logic of Loki, which Marvel Studios seems to be holding sacred. And before I begin, this video is brought to you by Squarespace. From websites and online stores to marketing tools and analytics, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence and to run your business. Kate Heron said in an interview that either way, Steve and Peggy were living in a branch timeline. No debate there. But really the question is whether or not that branch timeline was pruned. She said optimistic fans could argue that Steve and Peggy's branch wasn't so severe and maybe it didn't need to be pruned. But she went on to say that in her mind, and according to the logic of the TVA, Steve and Peggy probably were pruned. Yikes, scratch that it's been a long, long time record and crank up the emoji in heat. What you say? Oh, that Thankfully, we can finally dispel with that weird interpretation that old Cap could have been hiding in the background of the Infinity Saga, letting every historical tragedy happen, including his best friend being tortured for decades by Hydra. No, Steve did create a new branch history from 1949 onward in which he could have saved Bucky and altered the timeline however he wanted. But now, according to Heron, that also would make Steve a variant targeted for pruning. And we did speculate on this earlier in the season. Like in episode one, in the background of the TVA, a hunter escorts a variant who looks a lot like Peggy Carter. Interestingly, when she was asked about this directly, Kate Heron refused to debunk it and deliberately left the door open for more conversation about possible prune variant Peggy. But wait, variant Steve couldn't have been pruned, right? Because he showed up as an old man to hand off that shield to Sam Wilson. His survival means the TVA must not have caught him, and his wedding ring means he must have had at least some time with Peggy Carter, at least for the two of them to rush to a pawn shop and a wedding chapel before the TVA dragged her away screaming. Oh, Steven, I do. <laughs> I mean, I could definitely see that as a reason old Steve didn't want to go into it. You want to tell me about her? No. No, I don't think I will. This is where things get more confusing, because according to He Who Remains, the TVA was created to prune only the branch timelines that would lead to the rise of a rival Kang. That would help explain why there are so many alternate Lokis who lived varying lengths of lives before random mistakes got them pruned. Now if that throws you, I'll refer you back to my Bundle of Strands interpretation of the sacred timeline, that it's not one timeline, it's really a coil of alternate strands looped back upon themselves endlessly, and they don't interfere with each other, with every universal cycle ending with a big crunch and then resetting with a big bang. Like, bang, now we're on a Sylvie loop. Bang, now we're on a Gator loop, etc. Now, Heron complicates it by saying Steve and Peggy should have been pruned for merely existing together. Unless the implication is that every unplanned branch from the curated timeline would inevitably lead to a Kang. It's also possible that Steve and Peggy's union was the Nexus event that led to the rise of the Kang in that timeline, similar to how Loki and Sylvie's union was their Nexus event. You could even extrapolate that variants sharing knowledge would lead to futures where Nathaniel Richards would be more likely to unlock the secrets of time and transdimensional travel. But I like to simplify it as Kang hates love. Look, I love crafting these theories about where the MCU might be heading. Maybe you love carving rocket raccoons out of ice and you need a website to share your work with the world. Well, Squarespace is an all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence and let the world see your frozen trash pandas. Squarespace lets you present members-only gated content, connect your social media accounts, present video content, content, and all the other cool features to give you a super effective, super functional website for your hobby or your business. You can collect the emails of fellow Ice Guardians of the Galaxy enthusiasts and send custom newsletters. Squarespace will even sell you a URL. Head to squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash new rockstars to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. That's squarespace.com slash new rockstars for 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. 
scheme. So again, let's ask, if old Steve Rogers was a variant targeted for pruning by the TVA, how did he get away from them and age into an old man by the end of Endgame? There are three possibilities at least. First theory, as Heron suggested in her interview, the optimist's view that maybe Steve and Peggy's branch timeline was just harmless enough for the TVA to leave them alone. Nah, I don't think so. This organization's a bunch of dirtbags. If they can prune little kids, newlyweds are not off limits. And I think Heron's response to that variant Peggy Carter question suggests the TVA did not actually leave them alone. So on to our second theory. Steve and Peggy found a legal loophole. Now it's possible they were arrested, but somewhere in their legal proceedings, they managed to appeal to a higher authority that ruled that Steve represented a crucial anomaly that earned him a special immunity from the TVA. We know from the void that the living tribunal exists in the MCU. Now, I know it looks like its head has been severed here, so how much authority could it really have over the TVA? But actually, I'm pretty sure this is a statue of the Living Tribunal. So really what might have gotten pruned here was a timeline where the tribunal's rule was just more public and domineering, because why else does one have a statue of oneself? And he who remains needs the Living Tribunal to exercise more judicial restraint. Either way, Steve could argue that him going that extra mile to patch the sacred timeline with each of the inventors stones really earned him a get out of jail free card. Ultimately, I do think it makes a lot of sense for Steve to have had some correspondence with the TVA because a time door is just the cleanest explanation for how he could show up by the lake in Endgame from another timeline. But if all of this is going down in our head cannons, I want to live in a multiverse where Cap faced off against the TVA. So theory three, Steve and Peggy were TVA fugitives who built their own TVA. This explanation would initially mirror Loki and Sylvie's journey in Loki season one, like two variants who slipped in and out of TVA custody, but managed to get enough alone time by fighting their way out and hiding near apocalyptic events. But in Steve Rogers' case, instead of letting those apocalyptic events happen, don't you think he and Peggy would try to intervene to save lives? Perhaps these two spent their alternate history fighting to save as many people as possible from each of those apocalypses, and by doing so, becoming a whole different kind of frustration for the TVA for thwarting what was dictated in their script. So imagine this history where Steve and Peggy strive to right as many historical wrongs as they could. Not only freeing Bucky, but also freeing Isaiah Bradley, the Widows of the Red Room, helping the victims of Sokovia, the victims of Thanos. What we're talking about is really the origins of the Captain Britain Corps, a heroic multiversal organization that would be untouchable by the TVA, but one that refuses to let history always end in death and despair. What do you think variant old Steve did in his alternate life, and where is he now? Support New Rockstars by checking out our merch options at New Rockstars merch.com follow me on instagram and twitter at ea Voss. follow and subscribe to new rock stars for breakdowns of everything you love thanks for watching bye